Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the NV5 from Fantex and I'm really looking forward to this today. I absolutely loved their NV7. This case is less than half the price at only £85. Looks to be absolutely brilliant on paper. So if it does turn out to be just as good as it looks, it's going to be a really strong contender for budget case of the year. So let's make a start by taking a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix X670E eGaming Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I'm going to be using AMD's Ryzen 9, the 7900X. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm AIO from Fantex. It's their Glacier 1 T30 Gen 2. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Team Group's T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 at 6000 mega transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 5 NVMe drive from Crucial. It's their T700 in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I'm using Fantex's brand new Cable 3 Revolt ATX 3.0 fully modular platinum power supply. So as I mentioned, this power supply comes without any of the cables. And the idea behind this is a lot of people don't actually use the cables that come with their power supply. They end up getting custom cables and there's a lot of waste and Fantex want to try and avoid this. So what they've done is they've partnered up with Cable Mod. You can head over to Cable Mod's website, put in your case, and you'll get the cables that look just the way you want and the perfect length for your case. Alternatively, Fantex do offer a basic and complete cable kit for their Revolt power supplies, and I'm going to be using their complete cable kit in black. For the graphics card, I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4080. And then finally, for case fans, I'm going to be using Fantex's D30 120 fans, and I've got a mixer of standard and reverse fans. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's get building. So as usual, I'm going to make a start by preparing the case. And as we go, I'm going to point out all the features. So to remove our tempered glass side panel, there's two captive thumb screws on the back, which we need to loosen. And once these have been loosened, we can pull the side path backwards, tilt it out and lift away. Just before we remove our other side panel, you'll notice we've got this perforated area on the side of it, indicating that we're going to be able to side mount fans or radiators in this case. To remove this panel again, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back, which we need to loosen. Then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards, pull it out and lift away. If we take a look at the back of the case, you'll notice there's no separate dust filters and Fantex are going with just mesh. Although as the mesh is fairly fine, this shouldn't be a problem. Removing our front tempered glass panel is optional, but it is going to give us improved access to the build, particularly for mounting fans or radiators at the side of the case. To remove it, there's simply two screws that you need to remove. Then when the screw is removed, all we need to do is slide the panel to the side. And that's going to free it up and we're going to be able to pull it off from the front. So one of the things you might be worried about removing the tempered glass panel during the build process, are you going to be reducing the structural rigidity of the case? And particularly if you're mounting radiators and applying pressure at the top, are you going to bend the case? So if I apply a little bit of pressure to it, it actually feels really, really sturdy. I'm pushing down quite hard and the case really isn't bending at all. So I think with normal use, mounting radiators at the top, applying a little bit of pressure, moving the case around, it doesn't seem like you're going to do any harm. The case's I.O. is actually on the top and we've got a power button. We've got a mode and color button which are used to control the case's built-in ARGB controller. We've got a single USB Type-C port, two USB Type-A ports and a combined headphone and microphone jack. To remove our case's top panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back, which we need to loosen. And once they've been loosened, we can simply pull the panel backwards, lift it up and away. And if we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed again, you'll notice there's no separate dust filters, so Fantex are going with just mesh on this case. Taking a close look down at the bottom of the case, you'll notice Fantex are going with a similar angle design at the bottom of the case to the NV7. Although this is going to have less of an effect in the NV5 than it does in the NV7. In the NV7 you could have the bottom of the case angled and all your fans facing towards you. Because we're actually going to have our power supply at the bottom of this case and we've got this power supply stride which isn't angled, you don't really see the effect of that angle at the bottom of the case. We are able to mount a single fan at the bottom, but the bracket that it goes on is actually straight. So the fan is going to be facing straight up. Now at the bottom of the case we can mount up to a 120mm fan on this removable bracket. To remove the bracket there's one screw at the back we're going to need to remove. And then we're going to be able to simply lift the bracket up and away. 
In terms of other fan mounting locations, both at the side and at the top of the case, you can fit up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360mm radiator. And it is important to mention this case is all 120mm fans and radiator dimensions in multiples of 120. So you're not going to be able to fit 140mm fans or 280mm radiators anywhere in this case. And again, at the rear of the case, it's up to 120mm fan or radiator. In terms of motherboard support, the case does support motherboards up to EATX in size, and you want to go with the CPUR killer, the maximum height supported is 180mm. So although an EATX motherboard will fit in the case, it does come at a cost, and that cost is because the motherboard will extend further towards the front of the case, you're not going to be able to use the included GPU support bracket, so you will have to remove this for an EATX motherboard. Taking a look at the back of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slots, and you'll notice that Fantex have combined the brackets for the bottom three slots into one, which I do think actually looks slightly cleaner. In terms of graphics card support, you are going to be able to fit pretty large graphics cards in this case, up to a maximum length of 440mm and up to 170mm wide. So your graphics card should be really well supported in this case. There's this really nice GPU support bracket, and it is fully adjustable, so we loosen the thumbscrew at the bottom, and we're then going to be able to slide this part of the bracket out for wider cards. And again, height-wise, if we loosen the thumb screws at the back of the case, we're then going to slide the bracket up and down. And we've got really nice rubber padding on the bracket. Just before we leave the main body of the case, there's three more things I want to point out. We've got really nice rubber grommets over the two main cutouts to the right-hand side of the motherboard. We've got an ARGB light strip on the power supply stride. And it is actually possible to remove this front bit of the power supply stride. We've got one thumb screw at the back, which we need to remove. And then we should simply be able to lift this panel off. So one of the reasons you may want to remove this, if you need to add additional cables into your power supply, you maybe change something in the build and you need to plug in some new cables to your modular power supply. This, looking in through here, you're going to be able to see all the ports in your power supply and reach in easily and plug in an additional cable. The other thing that this is going to have here in the future is Fantex have an optional accessory for the case, which is going to be a screen that goes here. Now, I don't know if the screen actually mounts onto the original piece from the power supply scroud, but what would make more sense is it actually comes as a part which just slides in here with the screen on it. But we'll have to wait and see because that's not currently available. So again, another thing to point out, we've got a little cutout here on the power supply stride, and just behind it, there is a large cutout which should enable you to get all the cables coming to your motherboard from it. Um, if you've got an EATX motherboard, this may help with cables going to the bottom right-hand side of it. Or again, with the screen going on the power supply stride here, this cutout may well be for it. On the bottom of the case, we've got a full-length dust filter, which can be pulled out either from the front or the back for cleaning. So moving into the rear compartment, we've got this little door here, which you can simply open up. And on the back of the door, we've got our case accessory box. We'll go ahead and get that removed. And in terms of what you're getting in that case accessory box, we're getting our user manual, we're getting some cable ties, and we're getting our individual screw box. And you'll see one of the nice things that Fantex do is all the screws are individually sorted in the box. We've got the standoff insertion and removal tool, and we've got an additional standoff as well as all the screws we're gonna need for the build. So this door is removable during the build process. It's just a simple matter of lifting it up. Um, and in terms of drive mounting locations, really all the drives are gonna go on the back of this door. You can see all the little holes that we've got here. So you've got a choice here. You can fit up to three three and a half inch drives or up to four two and a half inch drives. You're simply going to slot the drives on the inside of it and then screw them in from the back. In terms of cable routing, this looks to be excellent. We've got this main cable raceway here with lots of Velcro cable straps, but we've also got Velcro cable straps here for our EPS cables. Cable routing space also looks to be really good. As already mentioned, our power supply is going to go down at the bottom behind the power supply stride, and the case is compatible with full-size DATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 230 millimeters. Taking a look at the back of the case, there's no removable power supply brackets. We are going to have to insert our power supply in from the side before screwing it in from the back. Another thing I'm noticing, we've got a little rubber grommet here at the back, which I imagine is for bringing the HDMI or DisplayPort cable coming out from that optional screen that you can mount on your power supply stride to bring it up towards your graphics card to get it plugged in. So the back of this case is much simpler than the bigger NV7. There's no removable cable cover door or fan brackets, but it's good to see the Fantex have included some Velcro cable straps to help organize your cables. 
We're now ready to start work on the motherboard and we're going to be installing the CPU, the bracket for our CPU killer, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open our CPU socket we need to push this lever down and out and bring it all the way towards the middle of the motherboard and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then set our CPU into the socket taking care to make sure we've got the text the correct way up and once we're happy the CPU is sitting correctly we can close the socket cover down again and then as we close this lever down the black bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. Next thing to do is install the brackets for our CPU killer and to do this we're going to need to remove the stock clips, they're each held on with two screws. Then we can simply lift the clips off. We get these brackets with our CPU killer and you'll notice there's a little arrow here pointing towards the CPU so we need to install the brackets the correct way round. And then we can use the four screws we've just removed to secure the brackets to the motherboard. This is our motherboard's Gen 5 socket and the heatsink is held on with two screws. We can then take our M.2 SSD and insert it into the socket and then we flatten the drive down and close the little clip here to hold our drive in place. If you're using the motherboard from new there'll be some plastic protection on the back of the heatsink that you're going to need to remove. And next we've got our RAM to install and we're going to be installed it in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU so I'm going to open the clips on these slots. Then we can line our RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the RAM and it's going to clip into place. And then it's exactly the same thing with our second stick. Line it up and push. We can now set our motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back. The middle standoff protrudes a little bit, so it is going to then stick through the middle hole, help holding your motherboard in place while you get the screws into it. And we can then secure the motherboard to the case using nine of the screws with a little lip around the outside. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we can go ahead and bring our cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. We've got two ARGB headers down at the bottom of the motherboard and coming from the case we've got this ARGB cable. Now how this works, if you plug this into your motherboard, your motherboard is going to control all the lighting plugged into the case's hub. If you don't plug this in, you're going to be able to use the buttons on the top of the case to control the case's ARGB. I would rather use the buttons on the top of the case, so I'm not going to plug this cable in. But if you do want your motherboard to control all the lighting of everything plugged into the case's hub, it's just a simple matter of plugging this into one of the ports on the bottom of the motherboard. Our front panel connectors are this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. And although it looks like one long header, it's actually two combined, so it's the pins over towards the left hand side that we're going to want to plug into. And Fantex have been really kind to us, they combined all the cables into one plug to plug into that header. And we're going to want to plug it in with the power switch text facing up the way. So we can go ahead and line it up with the header, push into place, and then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here, so we can go ahead and bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place and then pull the excess cable through to the back. We've got our Type-C header just above it so again bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place and again pull the excess cable through to the back. Okay so there still is a few cables for us to plug in. As already mentioned I'm not planning on plugging this ARGB cable into our motherboard because to do so would disable the buttons on the top of the case. In terms of what we, the buttons on the top of the case will control, our ARGB light strip on the power supply stride is already plugged into the hub and we've got two additional cables coming from our hub where we can plug things into. So this is a standard Fantex connector here and here, so we've got two of them. And we've also got a standard 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector here. So we've got three connectors we can plug things into and the hub will control them as well as the ARGB lighting strip that's already plugged into it. For the hub to work we are going to have to power it and we've got this SATA cable here which we'll need to plug into a SATA cable coming from our power supply whenever we install it. So this is our power supply, it's a really high end power supply with a platinum rating so it's definitely more than what we're going to need for this build but it will allow for lots of future upgrades and as I've mentioned it comes without any of the cables so you're either going to need to pick up a cable kit from Fantex or from Cable Mod, and I'll put links to both of them in the description. So Fantex have sent out their own cable kit specifically for this power supply. It comes in black and white. I've got the black version 
and it comes in a basic and a complete cable kit. The basic cable kit includes most of the cables you're gonna need for a build. The complete cable kit includes even more. So we can go ahead and open this up and see what we've got. So in here, we've got two bags of cables. Okay, so this is all the cables you get with the complete cable kit, and they are of an incredibly high quality. All the cables are individually sleeved and braided, and you've got these lovely, really thick cable combs. So this is gonna look really, really clean. When I first seen these cables and seen the price of them, I thought they were really expensive, but I've installed a lot of power supplies and a lot of premium power supplies, and these are by far the best cables that I have actually used. So it's definitely worth having a look at what you're actually gonna need for your build and comparing the prices of these cables to the ones that you get specifically made by Cable Mod for your power supply and for your case. But what I can say, these seem to be of excellent quality. Okay, so I've gone ahead and plugged the cables into your power supply that we're gonna need for this build. So I plugged in our 12 volt high power cable. I plugged in a SATA power cable. We're not gonna need SATA power for any drives, but we are gonna need SATA power for our case's built-in ARGB controller. I plugged in two 8-pin EPS cables to provide additional power to our CPU and I plugged in our 24-pin motherboard cable. So one last thing to show you before we get the power supply installed in this case, it has a hybrid fan mode. So with hybrid fan mode enabled, whenever the power supply is under low load, less than 30%, the fan will stop spinning, helping reduce noise in the build. And then when it gets over 30% load, the fan will kick in. So that does seem like a good idea to me to turn that on. And to turn it on, you want this button in the outer position. So with the switch out, it's turned on. With the switch pushed all the way in, it's turned off. So it's the outer position that we want it in. Okay, last thing to mention, this is our power supply's intake fan. So we're going to install it with this facing down the way so it can get cool air from the bottom of the case. So it's just a matter of sliding the power supply in at the bottom and then bring it all the way to the back. Then we can use four of the larger screws from the case accessory box to secure the power supply to the case. Our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard. We can go ahead and bring the cables through the cutout, line them up with the header and push into place. And as I mentioned, we've got really nice cable combs on the cables we can use to help organise them. Our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout. We can then line the cable up with the header and push into place. And then again, we can use the cable combs on the cables to help organise it. So just before we install our fans on the radiator, we're gonna to have to pick the fan setting that we want them to run in. So you can see here, we've got advanced performance and hybrid, and there's three different fan speeds, which will give you three different levels of performance, but importantly, three different noise levels. The hybrid is the lowest cooling potential, but also the quietest. So whenever your CPU is at a low temperature, the fans will actually stop spinning. Um, the performance is somewhere in the middle, whereas the advanced the fans will run at the faster speed, which will bring more noise. So I'm happy with them in the performance setting. If you do want to adjust it, so you can see there's a little lever here, and this is what is actually going to adjust the fan speeds. So if we pull the lever this way, that's it moved over towards advanced, where the fans will run at the fastest speed, but bring the most noise. Push it all the way over to settings this way to hybrid. It's going to run the slowest, but also give us the lowest noise. And the one I'm going to go for is the one in the middle, which is performance. So I'm going to leave all the fans set to performance. So in terms of installing the fans in the radio, you'll notice we've got cables coming from one side of the fans, and we're actually going to daisy chain all the fans together. So we are going to want to have this cable at the back of the case and the good side of the fans on at the front. So I've already sized this up in the case. This is going to be the back, so I'm going to turn the fans around and set them on the radiator this way. So in terms of installing the fans to the radiator, the AIO comes with two long sets of screws. We've got 39 millimeter long screws and 36 millimeter long screws. And it's the 36 millimeter ones, the slightly shorter of the longer screws that we're gonna to want to use. These 39 millimeter screws are only if you're installing the Fantex halos on top of the fans, and they're gonna have the extra length to go through the halos and the fans and then into the radiator. We're going to want to use the 36 millimeter screws because if we try and install these longer ones, they may actually damage the radiator.
Then we're going to want to daisy chain the fans together so we can just plug the PWM connectors into the splitter cable from the next fan. And obviously you'll notice this cable on this end is a little bit short, but Fantex do include this extension cable. So it's just a matter of plugging it into here. There we go. And then we're going to have a slightly longer cable, which we're going to be able to plug into our CPU fan header. So next thing to do is take a look at the cables coming from our pump. And we've got another four pin PWM connector. And this is going to go into our pump header on the motherboard. Now, if you do only have one CPU fan header, Fantex have got you covered. They include this double splitter cable. So we've got a four pin PWM connector on this end and two adapters on this end. So what you would do is plug this cable from the pump into here and also the long cable coming from your fans into here, leaving you one four pin PWM connector to plug into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. We've actually got three CPU fan headers on our motherboard, so we're gonna be fine to plug in the cables in separately, which is gonna allow us to control our pump and also the fans on the radiator separately. So in terms of ARGB, also coming from the pump, we've got a standard Fantex connector. So because we're using a Fantex case with a built-in controller, we're gonna be able to plug this directly into our controller. Um, and one of the nice things as well, we've got a little splitter here. So you plug this into a connector and you've got another connector here you can daisy chain something into. So if you're using a different case that doesn't have one of these connectors on it, Fantex again have thought about this and they include this adapter cable. So it would just be a matter of plugging into it. And on the other end of the cable, we've got a standard three pin five volt ARGB connector and that would go onto an ARGB header on your motherboard. And again, Fantex have been really kind to you. We've got another splitter cable with a three pin five volt ARGB connector on it, allowing you to plug another ARGB device into it. So as I've mentioned, our case has a nice connector on it on the controller. So I'm just gonna plug this directly into it rather than using our motherboard at all. We can then set our IO into place at the top of the case. And then we're gonna secure it into place with 12 of the short radiator screws. And then at this stage, we can return our case's top panel. Just before we install the pump to the motherboard, I want to point out that there's two different nuts that come with the I.O. The one with a little line in the middle is the one we're going to want to use for this motherboard, and it's used for LGA 1700 and AM5. The one that doesn't have the little line in the middle is for AM4 and LGA 1200. So it's this one that we're going to want to use. Our pump has thermal paste pre-applied, but if you install it for a second time, it's good to see that Fantex includes some additional thermal paste. Okay, so we can remove the plastic protection from the back of the I.O. and we're gonna take care not to damage the pre-applied thermal paste. Then we can take our I.O. and line it up with the bracket beneath. Apply a little bit of pressure to hold it in place. And then we're gonna to need to get a thumb screw onto each corner. Okay, then we're just gonna tighten each of the thumb screws up in turn. So next thing to do is get our cables plugged in. So our ARGB cable, I'm just gonna route through to the back of the case. And our pump PWM cable, again, I'm gonna route up towards the top of the case. And our pump header is this one at the top. There's three CPU fan headers at the top and it's the one towards the right that we're gonna to wanna to plug it into. And then we can just tuck the excess cable down and out of the way. Coming from the fans in the radiator, we've got another PWM connector and it's gonna go into our CPU fan header which is the header toward the left-hand side at the top of the motherboard. So we can get it plugged in, and then we can go ahead and route all the excess cable through to the back. And then at the back of the case, we can plug the ARGB cable coming from the pump into the ARGB cable coming from our controller. And we've got another daisy chainable connector we're gonna be able to plug our fans into later on. And then we've got some plastic protection on the pump we can remove. So another thing we get with the I.O. is these tubes that organize their clips, and there's three of them that come with the I.O. So just a matter of pushing them over the tubes, and that will help keep the tubes together and keep them organized. So I personally think the tubes look slightly better without these, so I'm gonna leave them off for this particular build. So I'm planning on installing three reverse blade fans on the side of the case set to intake, so the good side of the fans are gonna be on display and that's the reason I've gone for reverse blade rather than standard fans. And we're gonna line the fans up together. 
When you buy these fans from new, there is some little stickers on the side of them telling you how to connect one fan to the other. So I'll put a link to that guide in the video. I've used these fans before, which is why there's no stickers on them. But what we can do is to orientate them is make sure these lines are all going the same way. And if we take a look at the side of the fans, you're going to want to make sure you have the goal connectors all on the same side. And we turn this one round, this doesn't have any goal connectors. So it's important we have the lines in the front of the fans lining up with also the goal connectors lining up as well. So in terms of joining the fans together, we've got these little connectors with gold pins on them. So it's just a simple matter of pushing them into place to join the fans together. And we'll pop one on here as well. If we turn our fans around the other way, you'll notice this side doesn't have any gold connectors on them. So the little connectors we're gonna need don't have to have the gold pins on them. So it's just a matter of getting everything lined up and then clipping into place. So in terms of then getting the fans connected up, there's one of these cables which is gonna clip on to the corner. Coming from the other end of the cable, we've got two cables. There's a four pin PWM connector which is going to power the fans and control the speed of them. And the other connector is for our ARGB. And it's the same connectors we've got in our case. So we're gonna be able to plug these into our case's controller. And nice to see we're also gonna be able to daisy chain additional fans into them as well. If you are installing this in a different build and you don't have anywhere to plug this connector, Fantax do include this little adapter cable, which we'll push into here and give you a standard three pin five volt ARGB cable to plug into an ARGB header on your motherboard. But because we do have the case controller, I'm gonna leave this off. So in terms of where to connect this on the corner, we'll have two corners with gold connectors left on them, but it's the ones at the end of the fans are indented here that you're gonna to want to connect it on to. So in terms of getting things connected up, it's just a matter of sliding the connector into place at the end. And once you're happy it's in place, it's just a matter of then pushing forward and it will clip into place. So this is the other end of our fans and you can see we've got the protruding bit on it and this is obviously not the corner that you're gonna to want to connect the cable up to. But we do have the blank corner plates that we can put on the place to make the fans look slightly better. So it's exactly the same process. We're just gonna to want to get the end lined up. And once we're happy it's lined up, it's just a little bit of pressure on the side and it will clip into place. Okay, so the last thing to do in terms of tidying the fans up is we've got these little covering plates to cover the holes over. So obviously if you're screwing these onto a radiator, you would screw them in first and then put this on. But because we're installing in a case, we're gonna be screwing in from the back, we're okay to go ahead and install these at this stage. So it's just a matter of lining them up and pushing them into place. Then for our end connectors, we've got these little plastic plates as well. So there we go, that's our fans ready to go into the case. We can go ahead and set our three fans into place at the side of the case, and then we'll get the fans screwed into place at the back. And then we can pass the fan cables through to the back of the case. So I've also connected up two single fans exactly the same way as we did with the triple pack. So we've got a standard fan for the rear of the case, which will be exhaust, and we've got another reverse fan for the bottom of the case, which will be an intake. So I'm just gonna set our reverse blade fan onto our bottom fan bracket, and we can secure it into place with the screws that came with the fans. Just before we install our bottom intake fan, I'm just gonna pass the cables through to the back and then we can line the bracket up again and slot it into place. And we'll get it secured into place by replacing the screw at the back. Again, just before we install our rear fan, I'm just gonna pass the cables through to the back and then we can get the fan secured into place at the back. Next thing to do is get our fans plugged in. So we've got three system fan headers at the bottom of the motherboard. So we'll bring the PWM cables through and get them plugged into the headers. And then we can pull the excess cable through to the back. Okay, last thing to do is get the ARGB cables coming from the fans plugged into our ARGB hub. So what I'm gonna do is daisy chain our rear fan and our bottom fan together. And then I'm gonna take that connector and plug it into one of the connectors coming from our hub. That leaves us one spare connector coming from our hub. 
and we've got our three fans which I can plug into it. Before we can install our graphics card, we're going to need to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. So next we want to make sure the clip on the slot is open by pressing this little button here, which will open the clip up. I've already loosened up the GPU support bracket, so I've pulled it to its outer setting and moved it down as low as it will go, so it's well out of the way of our graphics card. And then we can take our graphics card and line it up with the slot. And once we're happy, we've got everything lined up. It's some firm pressure to the graphics card and it will clip into place. And we can then secure the graphics card into place with the two thumb screws we removed. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is get our GPU support bracket lined up. So I'm just going to slide this up to where it's providing support for our graphics card. And what I'm actually noticing with this up in its highest setting, it's not actually reaching our graphics card. So to fix this, what you'll notice is there's two thumb screws at the bottom. And when I try to lift it up, it's the bottom thumb screw that's stopping the graphics card going up any further. Um, there is another hole further up. You can see there's a hole just here. So what we can do is remove this bottom thumb screw. See, so now we'll be able to slide our GPU support bracket all the way up to where it is supporting our graphics card. And what I can do is just move that thumb screw up to the upper setting. So that's both thumb screws in and the bracket will go all the way up to where it provides support to the graphics card. So next thing I want to do, there's a little rubber pad here. So I'm just going to put it to where it's in the right place for the graphics card and tighten the thumb screw underneath. Then we can slide the bracket up to where it's providing support to the graphics card and tighten the two thumb screws underneath up. Now a final test I always like to do with any GPU support bracket is give the fans underneath it a spin to make sure they're not catching on the bracket. I have broken a fan on a graphics card by not paying enough attention to this. So the bracket is miles away from the fan, not causing any issues with it spinning, and it looks to be doing a great job of supporting our graphics card. We can then bring our 12 volt tie power cable through the cutout at the bottom, get it lined up with our graphics card, push into place and make sure we get a nice satisfying click when we plug it in. We've got some cable combs on the cable to help organize it. And then we'll just tuck all the excess cable through to the back. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. So that's the build complete and looking absolutely amazing. If you need to know how to set Windows up, install the drivers, set up the RGB software, go into the BIOS, update the BIOS and adjust all the BIOS settings, I've made another video on that and I'll put a link to it in the description. What I'm going to do now is some thermal testing and then I'll be back with a case review. So if you want to know what I think of the Fantex NV5, you're going to want to check that video out and I'll put a link to it in the description. So hopefully you have enjoyed this build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.